Welcome to the Campbell Museums. A mundane object, like a Civil War bullet, has many stories it can tell. In this video, I explore just a few of these stories. Think of this video as the abridged history behind Civil War bullets. This video is part of our What's in the Box series, where I pull a box from storage and see what we find inside. So check out the box number four playlist for more. Please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel to show us some love. You can also support the Campbell Museums by becoming a member. I noticed a heap of amputated feet, legs, arms, hands, etc. About a load for a one-horse cart. Several dead bodies lie near each covered with its own brown woolen blanket. The house is quite crowded, all the wounds pretty bad, some frightful, the men in their old clothes, unclean and bloody. Some of the men were dying. I had nothing to give that night, but wrote a few letters to folks home, mothers, etc. Also talked to three or four who seemed most susceptible to it and needing it. As the Civil War began to wage, startling numbers of killed and wounded soldiers shocked the nation and overwhelmed the medical establishment. In fact, many doctors were seeing gunshot wounds for the first time, and these were not your average gunshot wounds, but more on that later. Wounded soldiers often lay on the battlefield for hours as the combat continued around them. If the soldier was lucky, he would be taken to a field dressing station, often behind the cover of a few trees or rocks, and medical personnel would begin triage. Wounds were bandaged and whiskey and morphine might be given to numb the pain until he could be transported to the field hospital. The number of wounded meant that hospitals quickly became overcrowded and soon additional buildings like churches, schools, and even personal homes were taken over for hospital purposes. For many, amputation was the only route to survival. Wounded soldiers would be brought to the operating table, which in some cases was nothing more than a table or a church pew. The doctor would use a general anesthetic like chloroform or ether to put the patient to sleep and he would begin to amputate the limb. It is estimated that around 50,000 amputations were done throughout the war. What led to these grisly injuries and drastic medical procedures that had never been seen in previous American wars? Let's explore. This video will focus on early American military firearms as they relate to the objects in our box. A lot will be left out. Let's jump to British-ruled colonial America. Between the French and Indian War of 1754 to 1763 and the American Revolution from 1775 to 1783, muskets and powder horns would have been common. A powder horn is a container used for storing gunpowder. They are made from hollowed out cattle horns, which help to keep the gunpowder dry and to create a funnel to pour gunpowder into a musket. While our powder horn is very simple in design, Many colonial powder horns are important pieces of colonial folk art due to the elaborate carvings that can be found on them. These highly personalized carvings could range from being purely whimsical to containing battle information or maps from travels. As America fought for independence during the American Revolution, the military continued to use muskets, but powder horns became obsolete. Instead, paper cartridges began to be used. First, for gun novices like me, what is a cartridge? A cartridge is a pre-assembled ammunition packaging that contains a projectile like a bullet, shot, or slug, a propellant substance like smokeless powder or black powder, and an ignition device. All of this would be contained within a case. Today, we use metal. During the 17 and 1800s, we used paper. Paper cartridges were used before the advent of the metallic cartridge, and they consisted of a paper cylinder or cone containing the bullet, gunpowder, and in some cases, a primer or a lubricating and anti-fouling agent. 
The advantage of paper cartridges was speed since the gunpowder was pre-measured and packaged nicely with the bullet. The musket would be loaded from the muzzle end. The end of the paper cartridge would be ripped off or bitten open by the soldier. The powder would be poured into the barrel, the paper wrapped around the ball, and then the bullet was rammed down the barrel. This is a bit of a journey to answer, but let's go. Muskets are smooth bore weapons, meaning that the inside of the barrel is smooth and not grooved like a rifle barrel. Compared to rifles of the time, smooth bore muskets offered less precision in aim, but they were faster to reload. Due to this, the military chose the musket over the rifle for standard weapons. The musket's aim was poor due to the smooth barrel. Musket balls, like the one from our box, would bounce from side to side inside the musket barrel and would leave the barrel in an unpredictable direction. To remedy this, the musket ball was wrapped in a patch made of linen or paper. So the paper cartridge, while not entirely intentional, provided paper material for use as a patch. As we enter the 1800s, the smooth bore musket remained the main weapon of infantry, and rifles were used only by snipers and other specialist troops. All muskets were supplied with bayonets, which allowed them to be used in melee combat. In 1849, French inventor Claude Etienne Minier solved the problem of trading accuracy for a faster load time by inventing the mini ball, which is the next item from our box. This bullet made using rifle guns more practical by improving the reload time. As a result, many smoothbore muskets had their barrels replaced with similar barrels that were rifled so that they could fire the new bullet. These were called rifle muskets. The mini ball was actually shaped like a cone with a hollow cavity in its base and had three angular grooves on its body. When the powder charge exploded against the cavity in its base, the bullet would expand the grooves, which created a tight fit in the rifled barrel. No more paper patches were needed. This new bullet was used so effectively by the British Army against Russian forces during the Crimean War that the U.S. military adopted the mini bullet as early as the 1850s. And during the Civil War, from 1861 to 1865, the basic firearm carried by both Union and Confederate troops was the rifle musket and the mini ball. We have one more bullet in our box, and this is a Williams cleaner bullet, which was invented by American Elijah D. Williams in 1862 during the Civil War. The mini bullet and Williams cleaner bullet were both provided to soldiers in the Civil War. A Williams cartridge was included in every package of 10 cartridges, so in theory, every 10th shot you would fire would be a cleaner bullet. And the idea was that the William Cleaner bullet would remove some of the black powder buildup that would foul the rifle barrels. While the Williams bullet was considered to be incredibly accurate, its ability to keep the bore of the rifle clean seems to have been its main selling point. We are now back at the scene of the horrific Civil War hospital described at the beginning of this video and we are able to answer the question as to why Civil War battle injuries were worse than in previous American wars. Simply put, it was due to the mini bullet. There are several factors as to why the mini bullet was so deadly. As I just described, the mini bullet allowed for guns that had better aim and faster reload times than in previous wars. In addition, the rifle musket also had a longer range than smoothbore muskets. But it is not simply the accuracy, frequency, or range of fire that killed and disfigured so many men, but the characteristics of the ammunition that pierced flesh and bone. Since the mini bullet was made of soft lead, it would not go smoothly through targets. Unlike a solid ball which would pass through the human body, leaving an exit wound not much larger than the entrance wound, the mini ball flattened and deformed upon impact. The mini ball didn't just break bones, it shattered them. It didn't just pierce tissue and internal organs, it shredded them. 
and if the ragged, tumbling bullet had enough force to cleave completely through the body, which it often did, it tore out an exit wound several times the size of the entrance wound. While the rifle musket and mini ball combination were a military boon, they inadvertently created a medical crisis for doctors, surgeons, and volunteers who had to deal with their effects. Casualty figures for the American Civil War reached staggering proportions, with at least 1 million casualties, including around 620,000 military deaths, making the Civil War the deadliest American war, killing around 2% of the population. The rifle musket and mini bullet are thought to account for 76% of battle wounds. As noted in our video on galvanism, which you should check out for more details on Victorian era medicine, medical knowledge during the Civil War was a mixed bag. On one hand, you had general anesthesia for surgery. On the other hand, no one knew what germs were. So while doctors could put a soldier to sleep for surgery to remove a bullet, he could not knowingly prevent infection or stop the spread of infectious diseases. The mini bullet was deadly, but of the 620,000 military deaths during the Civil War, about two thirds died from disease, with black soldiers dying at higher rates than white soldiers due to subpar medical care. One method doctors used to try and avoid infections from bullet wounds was amputation. In the Union Army, three out of every four operations performed in field hospitals were amputations. One civilian hospital volunteer wrote, When I look at our host of maimed, some without an arm, some without a leg, others minus a foot, I realize their privation is lifelong and I can hardly restrain my tears. The Civil War was shaped by the carnage of the mini bullet, and while it was over 150 years ago, the Civil War is considered a watershed in the history of medicine. Some advancements, tied directly to the bullets in our box, are the creation of a multi-layered system of care on the battlefield that included first aid stations and field hospitals, the use of triage, and the widespread use of anesthesia during surgery. Advancements in surgical procedures, including specialization in plastic surgery and nerve injuries, and improvements in orthopedic medicine and the design of prosthetics. War is always tragic due to the lives lost and lives forever wounded, both physically and mentally. The American Civil War was one of the most extreme examples of this. As we look back at this moment in U.S. history, we can be grateful to those soldiers, doctors, and volunteers who were able to take such dark times and illuminate a path towards a society with better medical care. Mundane objects can contain big stories, and these bullets had a lot to say. What other stories might they tell? Thanks for watching, and please consider supporting us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and becoming a member of the Campbell Museums. 